Is the AFC North the best division in the NFL? All the Steelers do is finish above 500. The Ravens look like a legitimate title contender once again. Are the Bengals back? Is Joe Burrow healthy? Can the Browns reach their ceiling with Deshaun Watson at quarterback? We're going to talk about that all here today on our AFC North preview and predictions. I'm going to start with the Cleveland Browns, right? I don't feel confident which team between the Steelers and Browns will finish in third and fourth place, but I do feel confident predicting that those are the two teams that will finish at the bottom of this division looking up at the Bengals and Ravens, right? Uh, I could be wrong here. This is as competitive as it gets when it comes to a division in the NFL. Maybe the best division in the league. It really might be. But ultimately, I think the combination of talent, coaching, quarterback, I'm going to have the Bengals and Ravens at the top of the division. That leaves the Steelers and Browns in third and fourth place. So for the Browns, the ultimate question is, can Deshaun Watson get back to some semblance of what he was before his off-field issues and before he arrived in Cleveland and got that insane payday, right? Uh, Because you have literally everything else on this football team uh, as a playoff contender and even a title contender. Like This is a complete roster. It really is. Uh, The defense is absolutely loaded at every level. You have Jim Schwartz running things on that side of the ball. Very good defensive coach. I think his defenses have been had at times in the playoffs. You've seen that. Uh, But a very good coach and a great group of players on that side of the ball. You know, Miles Garrett, ever heard of him? He leads the pack on that side. uh, But they have great talent at all three levels. They really do. They have great pass rushers, great interior defenders, uh, linebackers. You know, the secondary might be second to none in the NFL. It is a really damn good secondary. So you look at the defensive side of the ball, I think they're going to be one of the best units again in the NFL in 2024. Offensively, it's all there with the skill position talent. You know, hopefully Nick Chubb can return to 100% health uh, by the time you get into September, October, coming off a knee injury. The offensive line is still in very, very good shape. Dredrick Wills, left tackle, he is going into a contract year. So it's a big season for him in terms of solidifying himself as a quality quality starting tackle in this league. I think he needs to have his best season yet. But Joel Batonio, still awesome. Pochich is good. Teller is good. Uh, Jack Conklin is still great. He is coming off a serious knee injury, which you have to keep in mind. So I think you could say at tackle, you have the biggest question marks on the offensive line. But are they really big question marks? For me, no. I think Jedrick Wills, at worst, is decent. And assuming Jack Conklin is healthy to start the season or healthy at some point, fully healthy at some point early on in the season, this offensive line's in great shape. You know, I think if the Browns were in a different division, easily a playoff team. And they made the playoffs last year in this division. Um, I think it was a little bit of a down year for the division overall with the Joe Burrow injuries, with the Steelers really not having an answer at quarterback. Um, it's going to be tough in the AFC North. So I think that the Browns are going to finish in third or fourth place, but would I be surprised if they make the playoffs? No, not at all, because, again, they have a loaded football team, great skill position talent. I think that they've done an amazing job at um, acquiring wide receivers via the trade market over the last several years. Uh, All three of their top guys, you know, Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, you just traded for Jerry Judy. They were able to get values on those players via trade. Uh, so they've been kind of taking advantage of some market inefficiencies, in my opinion, at wide receiver. Now, the Steelers, you just can't quit them. You cannot do it. Mike Tomlin, all he does is win in the majority of his regular season games. He has not had a lot of playoff success in a while. He also hasn't had a good quarterback in a while. You know, Ever since the wheels started falling off for Big Ben, The Steelers have been in no man's land at quarterback. Now they're rolling with Russell Wilson. They also brought in Justin Fields. You know, before the offseason kind of got got into uh, got into gear, I predicted that the Steelers would land Justin Fields. I also predicted that the Falcons would go get Kirk Cousins. And I was right on both of those fronts. But after the Steelers went and got Russell Wilson, I was not feeling so good about that. They did still end up acquiring Justin Fields, though. Uh, It appears that Russell Wilson will be the starter. I think that that's a decent fit with Arthur Smith. 
I would love to see Justin Fields in this offense, though. I hope we will see that at some point. I think Justin Fields operating in the the type of offense that Arthur Smith will bring, which will give you play action, which will give you a lot of running, uh, I think that he could be fantastic in this offense. But Russ running around, throwing it up for George Pickens, I think that could work out. I think that could be a nice pairing. I think that Roman Wilson is going to boom for the Steelers very quickly. This is a team that knows what they're doing when it comes to drafting wide receiver. I was really high on Roman Wilson in the draft. He's got great speed. He's got great hands. He's tough as they come. Not the biggest, but I think Roman Wilson will get the job done as a compliment to uh, George Pickens. And, you know, I wish that Deontay Johnson was still here, but I understand why they decided to move on in, in a different direction. But if you were looking at, Roman Wilson, Deontay Johnson, and and George Pickens as a trio at receiver, you feel amazing about that. Looking at the rest of the skill position talent, I think Jalen Warren is going to have a very good year under Arthur Smith. Cordell Patterson joins the mix as well. We know that Arthur Smith can get get it done with him, and then Najee Harris is fine at this point in his career. Uh, You have good tight end room, very good tight end room with Pat Fryermuth and company. Um, The offensive line. How about the glow up for the Steelers offensive line? They landed three players in this draft class at offensive line that I absolutely love. And again, that's on top of going and getting a Roman Wilson, who was another player I was a huge fan of. So Troy Fatanu, Zach Frazier, and Mason McCormick. Fatanu is going to be a tackle for them. Frazier and McCormick slot inside. I think Frazier probably at center. McCormick can play guard. Uh, These are two... Three guys that I absolutely loved in the draft. They're all very good athletes at the positions that they play. Um, Troy Fatanu had the best hands of any offensive tackle in this class, the most advanced hand usage of any tackle in this class. Great athlete, great length. I think he's going to be fantastic for them. He's going to bring a Steelers mindset. Zach Frazier, former wrestler, same thing. And then Mason McCormick is a mauler who tested out of his mind. So, you know, holy crap, when you talk about the glow up for the Steelers offensive line, you already added your guy last year at tackle. So you're feeling really good about the direction of the Steelers offensive line without question, in my opinion. It's in the best place it's been in in a while. Defensively, I mean, do we really need to talk about it too much? You have TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, Cam Hayward, Keanu Bitten all up front, Nick Herbig as well, a linebacker who can get the job done as a rusher. Uh, You upgraded your off-ball linebackers with Patrick Queen. Even if he's not who he was next to Roquan Smith, which I don't expect him to be playing at the same level he was with the Ravens. Much better than what you had. And he's still got a very good supporting cast around him here. Up front, on the back end in the secondary, you have Minka Fitzpatrick still, JPJ going into year two, Cam Sutton is back. He's a guy that knows how to operate within this defense. I liked Corey Trice a lot in the draft last year. I hope he can take a step forward. You acquired Dante Jackson in the Deontay Johnson trade. Jackson is a fine, adequate starter, right? Um, So this is a team on both sides of the ball. I like the talent. You obviously love... Mike Tomlin as the head coach. I think that Arthur Smith was a huge upgrade at offensive coordinator. You've had Terrell Austin doing a good job on the defensive side of the ball for a long time. Ultimately, I think they're going to continue to win football games. I certainly think that Justin Fields gives you the higher ceiling than a Russell Wilson does. But Wilson probably does give you a more stable floor. I want to see Fields, though. I, I really do. The bottom line, though, is this team wins in the regular season. They'll be in it at the end of the year, and they should have a more cohesive offense with better quarterback play than they've had the last few years. I think that's kind of a scary thought for uh, teams in the AFC North. A Steelers team that still has the same nucleus on defense that also has an offense that, that, that should make more sense. Yeah, that could be dangerous. It could be. I don't see them as a title contender, but I think that they're certainly a playoff contender. Now, I have the Bengals at two. Super, super strong offensive skill group. When you talk about Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and T. Higgins as an offensive trio, a passing game trio, it does not get better than that from a from a quarterback and top two wide receiver standpoint. That's a deadly group. You add Jermaine Burton to the mix, who... You can talk about the off the field. You can talk about the personality. Jermaine Burton, bottom line, he is a really talented receiver that you're adding to that mix. I think they continue to improve on the offensive line. 
Still not in love with the starting group, but I do love adding Amarius Mims in this draft, and you could see him starting sooner rather than later because while he's not the most experienced tackle, in fact, very inexperienced, his tape is fantastic. He does not play like a project of a tackle, and he is one of the freakiest athletes you're ever going to see at the position. Zach Moss, Chase Brown and company at running back. It's a quality backfield. I think this year you see a lot of 11 personnel. Joe Burrow getting the ball out quickly. I think defensively, it's going to be a really fun year to see what Lou Anarumo can cook up on that side of the ball. I hate losing DJ Reader, right? But I believe the aggregate of BJ Hill, Chris Jenkins, and Sheldon Rankins can get the job done at a fairly high level. Love Chris Jenkins as a run defender. I think Sheldon Rankins can bring a lot of juice as a pass rusher. BJ Hill is a very good football player. So you still have a solid interior trio there. Trey Hendrickson is awesome as an edge rusher among the best in the league. Sam Hubbard is super solid. I am here for a Miles Murphy breakout in 2024. Uh, I love the linebacker duo. It's super strong. Fired up that Von Bell is back. That was one of the most underrated moves this offseason. The Cincinnati Bengals getting Von Bell back in that secondary and Geno Stone arriving as well from Baltimore. So now Dax Hill, Jordan Battle, they're going to have to fight for reps. They're going to have uh, more specified roles, I think, in this defense. Looking at the corners, Cam Taylor Britt, darn good player. Mike Hilton, very good slot player. And I'm here for a DJ Turner glow up in year two. I'm confident in this defense. And the reason being is I think the pieces, the talent are there in Cincinnati. And I believe in Big Lou, Lou Anarumo. I don't think you can hold him down for very long in this league as a defensive coordinator. He can be a game plan coordinator week to week and in the playoffs. That is huge. So I think the Cincinnati Bengals with a healthy Joe Burrow, and that is the caveat, a healthy Joe Burrow, are the second best candidate in the AFC to take down the Chiefs in the playoffs. It just so happens that I think the best candidate to take them down plays in their same division, and that is the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson is unbelievable at the quarterback position. Everyone talks about his rushing ability, which is electrifying, but he is a very good passer of the football as well. Uh, I know he's going to be a little bit lighter heading into this season. will be interesting to see how that impacts his game, but Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry in the same backfield is going to be must-see TV. I cannot wait to see what that looks like. Uh, I think that adding Roger Rosengarten, a very underrated move at right tackle in this draft. There are some questions at guard about what you're doing there with, with uh, you know, Voorhees stepping into a bigger role. Cleveland getting back in the starting lineup. You need Ronnie Stanley to stay healthy at left tackle. But I think that they've been able to make it work with less on the offensive line, so I still have confidence in them there. Zay Flowers in year two. I think he's ready for a huge year. Mark Andrews is back in the mix. He's back healthy. Isaiah likely proved that he is a reliable receiving threat. Rashad Bateman, when healthy, can play. And I think Devontae Walker in the fourth round was a steal. I thought he should have been a day two player. Uh, I think that his senior bowl week really, really knocked him down the board. But the way he played throughout his time at Kent State and at North Carolina as a deep threat is going to be great for this offense, in my opinion. I think that the the Ravens' passing game is going to be just fine with this group of pass catchers and, of course, Lamar Jackson throwing the football. And um, obviously, you know, what they were able to do from a passing game standpoint when Todd Munkin took over as the OC, uh, it, it was awesome to see in year one, and I think you can see further development in year two. Defensively, Zach Orr takes over after you lose your defensive coordinator. You lose a bunch of assistants. All these guys land promotions elsewhere. Uh, I think Zach Orr has the mindset. I think that he is a smart, detail-oriented guy. He spent some time in Jacksonville. Uh, Does he have the same in-game play-calling prowess and skill that Mike McDonald had? That's the question, right? We'll see the answer. Uh, But I think that the interior is still absolutely loaded. Justin Matabuike, Michael Pierce, Travis Jones, Broderick Washington. There's plenty of talent, athleticism, length on the edge. Owe, Ojabo. Kyle Van Noy, Adisa Isaac joins the mix as well, and I'm a fan of him coming out of Penn State uh, with what he brings to the table. Roquan Smith still running the show at linebacker. Trenton Simpson is a talented player who should, in my opinion, play well next to him. Uh, I think that uh, Roquan Smith massively upgraded, as I mentioned before, Patrick Queen's play on the field. I think he'll be able to do the same for Trenton Simpson, who's a young player that has a lot of athleticism. The secondary, I think on coverage downs, they're going to be locked down back there. Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, Nate Wiggins at corner. Kyle Hamilton, what can't he do back there? Marcus Williams, 
Uh, this looks like a fairly complete football team, in my opinion. And if push comes to shove, I think that they could make a move at the deadline. I think offensive line is the biggest question. Again, they have done more with less in the past on the offensive line. But if Ronnie Stanley goes down, if it's not working out for one of your guards, I think maybe potentially you make a move at the deadline to go solidify that offensive line because this is the second best team in the AFC, in my opinion. They're close to being the first best team in the AFC. The top questions are just, can they have decent health down the stretch, especially on that offensive line? Can Zach Orr be anywhere close to as as good as Mike McDonald from an in-game play-calling standpoint? We'll see how it all plays out, but I think this is the top contender to take down the Chiefs in the AFC. I cannot wait to see Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry in the same backfield. If you're a fan of any team in the AFC North, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Y'all have a good one.